Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Serious testing, successful hunting. I've got another great broadhead battle lined up for you today. And I'm going to be testing head to head these two classic heads by G5. In this corner, I've got the Montec, one of the best selling broadheads of all time. And then in this corner, I've got their new M3. Okay, so the heads are really similar. It's going to make a really good broadhead battle. Just some slight differences in their design. And thank you so much to Riley Finnegan from Simmons Sporting Goods who donated both of these packs of heads so I could do this test. And for the test, I'm going to be using my Bowtech SR6 set at 72 pounds. And I'm using Bishop FOC King Arrows for most of the shooting. But then I'm going to be using the, the Bishop Fad Eliminators for the really hard impact shots. So let's zoom on in here, check out these two broadheads, and then let the broadhead battle begin. First we'll take a look at the Montec. And this is solid stainless steel. It's metal injection molded. This is a 125 grain model. Their cutting diameter is one and one eighth inch with three blades like that, giving it a total cut of 1.69 inches. The total length of the broadhead extending beyond the arrow is 1.59 inches long. And the blades at their, uh, their thinnest point, not counting the bevel and the edge, just the main part of the blade is 0.042 inches thick. It gets a little thicker at the base. You can see it has a really nice chisel tip that the blades come to, very pointy at the end. And the blades back here are cut out just to, uh, to save some material, to save weight, as well as to make them a little bit more aerodynamic. You notice that it's extremely vented in the, in the middle there. Now here is the M3, and the M3 here, this one, is also 125 grains, and uh, it's made out of 420 stainless steel. Now it says it's a better steel. I don't know if that means it's better than the Montec. They don't really say what the Montec is made of, but 420 is kind of a typical stainless steel for a broadhead application. And it too is metal injection molded. Now the cutting diameter of this is one and one sixteenth inch. Unlike the package, the package says that it's one and one eighth inch, but that's incorrect. On the website, it says it accurately. It's one and one sixteenth inch, and I measured that myself, and that is accurate. So the total cut of the M3 is a bit smaller. It's a tenth of an inch smaller total cut than the, uh, the Montec. It's 1.59 inches of cut compared to 1.69 inches of cut. 1 and 1 16th inch cutting diameter compared to 1 and 1 8th inch. And that's where they get the, uh, the extra weight to make the blades solid like they are. It has just a smaller cut. Now the, uh, the blades uh, come to a, a nice tip, not quite as stout of a tip as you saw on the Montec, but still a, 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 a you know, nice sharp tip like that. It has a similar cutout of the back edge. And in terms of the blade thickness, the main part of the blade is the same as the Montec. It's 0.042 inches thick, but where there was a cutout, in the Montec right here, these are filled in, but they're not filled in at that same thickness. They go down to 0.029 inches of thickness, where you can see that cut out there. So yes, it's solid, but it's not like it's the solid 0.042 inches thick all the way around. Now the total length of this broad is a little bit shorter. It's a tenth of an inch shorter than was the Montec. It's 1.46 inches long. It's like actually, 13 hundredths of an inch shorter, okay, like 1.3 tenths of an inch. It's 1.46 inches long compared to the Montec was 1.59 inches long. So in summary, the M3 is solid, not vented. It's shorter. Um, it has a narrower cut and it has a, a thinner portion of the blades right in there, but still makes it solid. So I'm eager to see how these two heads compare in all of my testing. I'm gonna put them through all the tests that I use for 2021. And if you're interested in getting a detailed description and explanation of why I do the tests and, and uh, some little background to the tests and a little bit more understanding of what the tests measure and how it's measured, please read about that in the description box below this video. I print it there so I don't have to repeat it each and every time. But let's see how 
the Montac and the M3 compare in this head-to-head -head battle. Three hundred. Three twenty five. The Montec penetrated five and a half inches, and the M three penetrated six inches. Five fifty. Four twenty five. Both of them penetrated through fifty two layers. Here's the Montec after five shots into the steel plate and it held up very well. The edges are in great shape. The tip did get quite a bit blunted there. It just lost its very tip of the tip there. Still spins extremely well. Here's the M3 after five shots through the steel plate. It held up very well. It's almost identical to the Montec. The tip got a little bit blunted at the end and the edges uh, only have cosmetic damage. You know, you can't even call it damage. The edges are in great shape, but you can see a little bit of cosmetic scraping there. Here you can see the wound channel of both of these heads, the Montec there in the left and the M3 on the right. And you can see they're just, you know, not super impressive holes, okay? They have pretty small cutting diameters. Um, and you can see the M3 is just slightly smaller than the Montec. Here's the Montec after the concrete, and as you can see, it did fairly well. The only uh, noticeable damage, other than the blades getting dulled there a bit, is this tip got curled a bit right there. So that, that's not going to be reusable. It'd be really difficult to get that out. And there's a slight bend to it. You can see that wobble right there somewhere. I don't think it's just the tip. I think probably the ferrule itself got a little bit bent, but overall it held up fairly well. And here's the M3, and man, it stuck really deeply into that concrete. Uh, the Montec stuck really deeply as well, but, but the M3 stuck even more deeply. That smaller cut, I think, really made a difference in the penetration. And you can see that it's still uh, in really good shape. has a slight wobble to it, and the tip got a little bit bent, a little bit less then did the Montec, but very similar overall after hitting the concrete. So what'd you think of this broadhead battle? Who would you declare a winner? The Montec or the M3? You know, I expected there to be more of a difference between these two than there actually was. But in most of the categories, almost all the categories, they really performed identically. I, I was surprised by that. And so each one has an edge in a different area. The M3 has an edge in being quieter in flight, if that matters to you. That doesn't really matter to me in a hunting situation. You know, bow noise really bothers me because that's really easy for an animal to pinpoint. Arrow flight noise, I've never seen it be an issue in a hunting situation. But anyway, the M3 has the edge in that area. 
The, uh, the Montec has the edge in having a little bit greater cut, one and one eighth inch diameter versus one and one sixteenth inch. Both of them can be sharpened really easily just by laying them flat on a stone and just stroking it like that with their 60 degree bevel. Or you can use the Stay Sharp Guide 344 on either of these and put a 44 degree bevel on them and make them all the more sharp. But they're both really equal heads in so many regards that as much as I hate to do it, I'm declaring this broadhead battle a draw, okay? It's one of those you go, oh, it's a draw. Who likes a draw in a battle? But truly, this is a draw. Both of them perform fairly well. I personally prefer a little bit wider cut for hunting whitetail and, and smaller animals, you know, deer and smaller than that, hogs and stuff like that. But for those who are looking for a little bit smaller cut, check these heads out.